Hi, this is Tom Anson, and I want to welcome you to our lecture on basic switching. This video is going to cover information you're going to need to know for your Juniper JNCIA exam, or if you're taking the Cisco CCENT exam, you'll need to know it as well. Uh, so, I basically just want to tell you a little story today about uh, a little switch that could. And we're going to take a look at how our little switch handles a ping from one device to another without using layer 3. So the question I would ask if somebody told me this was, how is this possible since a ping points to an IP address? And I'm going to show you. So let's take a look at our topology. We have host 1 with the IP address of 10.120.0.4 and host 2 with the IP address 10.120.0.5. Now we do have a VLAN uh, of 10.120.0.254 and we won't be using that in this lecture but in later lectures we will need that IP address so I have it on our topology just so we know it's there uh, but in this case host 1 is going to want to ping host 2 so it's going to ping 10.120.0.5 and we'll see how that the switch handles this situation. Switch doesn't care about the IP address, it's layer two. And so it, it, if that's the case, how can the switch take traffic from 0 0.4, send it to 0 0.5, and then get it back to 0 0.4 again? So let's take a look at what's going to happen here. First of all, we need to initiate our ping. So ping 10.120.0.5, we're on host one right now. And we see a reply from host one or host two comes back and we haven't lost any packets. Everything looks good, traffic uh, works right away. And so that's great. Um, we have communication, wanderful. However, I wanna just take a quick look under the hood. And so another command you can run on host one is arc a and this is the end product of what we want to see happen we want traffic to go from 0 4 across the switch to 0 5 and come back and the end product is is that we have an arp entry and arp just stands for address re re uh, resolution protocol and so our host one begins building this table called an arp table uh, with both the IP address and the physical address or MAC address of the devices it's communicating with. And so in this case, we have one entry, and that is for host 2. And this is what we want to see happen. Um, both devices are going to use ARP, which just matches layer 3 IP addresses with layer 2 physical addresses. And then the switch isn't going to use ARP at all in this specific situation. I do want you to understand that a switch does have an ARP table, but it is not going to be used since we're just sending traffic in the same subnet uh, to each other. There's no reason for the switch to actually have to use ARP. So let's look at the switch and see what happens. Let's look at this whole process. So first of all, we send that ping and since initially host one does not have an ARP entry. We saw the ARP entry, but that was after this whole process happened. So we're trying to get that ARP entry. So host one is going to send out an ARP message out its ethernet interface up to the device it's connected to, which just so happens to be our little switch, switch one. And it's going to ask in that ARP message, it's going to say who has 10.20.0.5, which we know is host two. But the switch doesn't know that yet. The switch has just been turned on. Uh, both devices have just connected and, and nothing has been sent across yet. And so this is the first message. Host one sends this ARP message up to the switch. And the switch, because it doesn't have any of this information yet, is going to reply and say, I don't know, um, but I'm gonna ask for you. And so then what the switch will do, in that process, that initial communication between host one and switch one, Switch one's smart and it takes uh, two pieces of information from host one. That initial message carried, uh, carried host one's MAC address on it. And so 
the Switch 2 is going to take that MAC address, and now it also has an interface that that traffic came in on, which is FE0 slash 1. And so now it's going to take those two pieces of information, which are both not layer 3, both layer 2, and it's going to put them into what's called a CAM table, uh, or content addressable memory table. This is also known as the MAC address table. And in fact, the command you'd run to see it is show MAC dash address dash table on a Cisco switch. So you'll hear that term MAC address table or CAM table. They're, they're interchangeable. They're the same thing, um, at least for our purposes right now. The CAM table can contain other information as well. Um, but when you're looking at MAC, MAC addresses or show MAC address table, uh, you're just listing the MAC addresses which are in the CAM table. So for our purposes now, CAM equals the same thing as the MAC address table. Um, again, the switch also has an ARP table, uh, but that is not being used in this scenario, and I'll explain when it would be used toward the end of the, pr the presentation. So CAM table gets an entry from host one on switch one. So now switch one knows where host one is and it knows what MAC address it has. And then now what it's going to do, now that it's got that information stored away in its table, it's going to, since it doesn't know where to send the traffic, it doesn't have a CAM entry for host two yet, it's going to flood that ARP request out every single port on switch one except for port one or fast ethernet zero slash one because that's the port that the traffic rode in on and so this is something you need to know uh, I would I would take note of it because it's a question that's often asked on exams um, how do you you know you know what what ports are broadcast and so this is what what broadcast is is it takes information coming in on one port doesn't know where to send it, so it floods it out every single port on the device, except for the port that the traffic rode in on. So port one is not going to get broadcast traffic because it's connected to host one, but every uh, all 23 other ports on this device, we can see it's a 2960 slash 20, or dash 24, so it's got 24 ports on it. All 23 other ports on this device are going to uh, have this ARP request broadcast on them. Now we're trying to reach host two. Let's say that we also have host three, four, and five uh, connected. And so they're all gonna receive this ARP request, but because they know that they don't have that IP address, they're gonna get these ARP requests and they're just gonna ignore them. They're gonna drop the traffic. However, host two is gonna receive it and say, hey, that's me. And then it's going to respond back. And so, Host two will respond with an ARP, ARP message saying, I do, and here's my MAC address. And that's the information host one needs for its, uh, for its ARP table. And so that's why host two sends that information back. Also, you want to note that host two at this point is going to enter host one's MAC address and IP address into its ARP table. So now it has that ARP entry. Um, but now the traffic has to get back before host one can do the same. So host two replies back to the switch. I have, I have that IP address. Here's my Mac. And the switch is going to do the same thing it did for host one. It's going to take, and this should say FE zero slash two. It's going to take the Mac address from host two in that reply. And it's going to note which, which interface or port host 2 is connected to, which would be FE-02, and it's going to add that to its CAM table as well. And so now, if we take a look at the CAM table, then we can see Fast Ethernet 02 and Fast Ethernet 01 both have entries, and 02 is the entry for host 2, 01 the second entry there is actually the entry for host one. And if you were to look in Packet Tracer, which is what this, uh, this topology is built on, if you were to look in Packet Tracer at host one and look at the MAC address assigned to it in the settings, you would see that it matches this entry. And same thing with host two on FAO2, you would see that 
host 2's MAC address matches. So now the switch has built this table and it can communicate directly between each one of these devices without using an IP address because it knows the MAC address and it knows the interfaces that they're connected to. So now switch 1 has that information and it's recorded it all and it's dutifully going to forward that ARP request back to host 1. And so now we've made a complete traversal of this link or these two links. And so host 1 has sent traffic up to the switch. Switch 1 has broadcast it. Host 2 responds to that broadcast and everyone else ignores it. Switch 1 now forwards that ARP request back to host 1. And this is where host 1 will now add um, host 2's MAC address and IP address into its ARP table as well. So host 2 has an entry for host 1 in its ARP table and now host 1 has an entry for host 2 in its ARP table. And switch has an entry, switch 1 has an entry for both host 1 and host 2 in its MAC address table for the port number and MAC addresses for each device. So if we were to go to switch one and do show ARP, I told you that ARP was not used in this, uh, and we can see that here. ARP is, the ARP table is completely empty on switch one. However, our show MAC address table command shows us that, uh, again, like we saw in the last slide, uh, we do have entries for both devices. So going forward, when these two devices try and communicate, when host 1 tries to send a, a, a ping to host 2, instead of it going up to the switch like the ARP request did, and then the switch broadcasting that traffic out every single interface except for the interface it wrote in on, um, it doesn't need to do that because now it has both of these entries and it says, oh, I know where that MAC address is. It's on... FAO2, so I'm going to send that traffic out FAO2, and then the response will come in, and it's directed back to host 1's MAC address. And so switch 1 is going to say, oh yeah, I have that entry as well, and I'm going to just forward that traffic out of FAO1. And so now the switch doesn't have to broadcast, it can just forward traffic unicast to the device that the traffic is intended for. And so that's that's how this all works. Now, uh, I want to just talk about ARP really quick on Switch 1. Um, if we were to ping our, let's say, our VLAN interface, I talked about that VLAN interface um, for, for a future lab that we're going to do. Um, if we were to ping that interface from Host 1, we're pinging Switch 1. So which one is going to actually do the same exact thing that host 2 did and when it receives that initial ARP request, um, instead of forwarding the traffic, it's just going to respond to it. And at the same time, it's going to add host 1's MAC address and IP address into its ARP table. And in, this case, in that case, we would actually be doing some layer 3, even though this is layer 2 switch. Um, ARP it operates on layer 2, but it does take note of layer 3 IP addresses. Um, so that's kind of one of those weird things where you're like, well, it's operating on layer 2, but we're talking about IP addresses. Yes, it does. It does kind of actually do both. But um, ARP will only, only show up in the ARP table if the switch itself is pinged. And so you can replicate this if you create this topology in your network on Packet Tracer. Uh, you can do both things, and you'll see as you if you run these two commands on the switch throughout the lab, you'll see when ARP shows up and when it doesn't on the switch. And so in this topology, ARP is not used. We don't need to use it. We can make it happen if we were to ping the, the switch itself, but in this case, since we didn't ping the switch, no ARP, just CAM information. 
So if you went to each of these hosts in this topology and did an ARP-A from the command line, as I said earlier, you'd, you'd see an ARP entry for each host uh, for a little while. Um, and also if you ran those commands that we just saw on the switch for a little while, your MAC address table is going to be full. However, if you walk away and come back a little later, you'll see that all that stuff clears out. And that's actually a good thing. Uh, it can be frustrating when you're trying to build a video on it and, um, and things keep on disappearing while you're trying to work on it, like I had in this situation today. Um, however, I've run into situations where, like for instance, I was working for a hospital system and we supported a doctor's office that was about 45 minutes away from our office. And I'd gone out and put a PC on the network and um, it just so happened the PC that I put on had the same static IP address as another PC that was already there. I don't know if the PC was turned off when we, when we ping, but you know, live and learn. You make sure that you don't duplicate IP addresses. Well, I got back to my office and uh, I tried remoting onto the one device and in the process of that, that drive back, somebody had turned on the machine uh, with a duplicate IP address. And so when I remoted onto the device using an IP address, um, I ended up on the wrong PC and took a little while to figure out what was going on. And so we ended up changing the IP address on the system that I was remoting to because I couldn't reach the new system. And uh, we, you know, disconnected. Of course, as soon as you change the IP address, you lose connection. Um, and then I could get to that device just fine with the new IP address. However, the device that I had installed with the duplicate IP address still wasn't reachable. And what was happening was the cam table on the switch was um, still had the, uh, the old entry. And so it was pointing to the wrong port. It had the MAC address and the port listed, but they were the wrong port. They were pointing to the, the system that had already been on the network that had already had that IP address. And so um, you can clear out that, that cam table uh, you may have to do that from time to time. You also may have to clear the ARP table or the ARP cache, you'll hear it called, uh, from time to time in a situation like this. Um, but you want to understand how these technologies work. So I would encourage you to create a lab in, in Packet Tracer, mirror this one, and run the commands that I described in this video. Um, and you'll see how all this is kind of works. And you see that there's a lot going on in a very short amount of time uh, when you get into this. And, that, and that, that's good. We want our networks to work fast. But we also need to understand what's happening when problems go wrong so that we know how to troubleshoot them. And so that's our, that's our lecture. That's our lesson. In our example, we saw that even the host one pinged the IP of host two, our smart little layer two only switch figured out how to get the traffic from one place to the other without having to use any Layer 3 IPs. So this is a, this is a look at basic switching. And I want to just thank you for joining me today, and I hope you enjoyed it. And we'll see you back next time for a little bit more in-depth look at switching.